We're now at question two of the January 2021 CSEC Mathematics Pass paper. It says here, factorize the following expression completely. All right, let's look over here. I already copied that question. Here, you have 12n squared minus 4mn. I want you to pause the video and try it. All right, you finish. What did you get? Let's see what happens here. You have 12n squared minus 4 mn here now you see what can divide into 12 and also 4 in other words you want a factor of 12 which is also a factor of 4 you want the HCF highest common factor of 12 and 4 what is that well, that's 4. Then in terms of the letters now, you have N as a common factor. Open bracket. 4 times what you're going to put here will be, th will be 12. It's going to be 3. Then N times what you're going to put here is going to be N squared. So what you're going to put right there is N. So that if you multiply out the bracket, 4 by 3 is 12, n by n is n squared, alright? Minus 4 times this you're going to put here is 4, so it's going to be 1. What else do you put there? It's m, n times what gives you n? It's 1, so 1 will come here. So let's rewrite this, without the 1's, it's 4, n, open bracket 3n minus m what else can be done about it well that seems to be it that's 4n 3n minus m in bracket all right now i don't see how it can be factorized any further so let's continue Part B says, show that x divided by 1 minus x minus 4x is equal to this thing you have on the right. So, let's copy it and paste it over here. Paste it. Where did it go? Oh, let's bring it down and expand it. <coughs> So, what you're going to do now is have x divided by 1 minus x minus 4x. You're going to show that it is equal to this. I want you to pause the video and do that for me. Alright, did you do it? Did you finish? Let's see. x over 1 minus x minus 4x. It's a fraction. This is a fraction. So let's make this as a fraction also. Put it over 1. If you use the LCM method now, you draw the line and find the LCM of 1 minus x and 1. What is the LCM? It's going to be 1 minus x. 1 minus x into 1 minus x goes 1 time. 1 times x will give you x. So x will come here. Remember, you have to remember how to deal with your, your fractions. All right? Minus 1 into 1 minus x is 1 minus x times. 1 minus x times 4. x is 4x times 1 minus x. So what do you get? Is going to be if you consider say say you want to expand the brackets you're going to have x minus 4x for negative 4x times 1 is just 
minus 4x negative 4x times negative x is going to be positive 4x squared all over 1 minus x all right now this is 1x x means 1x now here what you're going to have 1x minus 4x will be give you what? It's minus 3, negative 3x three plus 4x squared over 1 minus x. Hope you see that. Alright? Let's rewrite this, putting the 4x squared to the left and the minus 3x to the right over 1 minus x. What will happen here now? You find a common factor. The common factor is x. So put x outside the bracket. Open bracket. x into 4x squared goes 4x minus x into 3x goes 3 divided by 1 minus x. Um, was it that? x, 4x minus 3 divided by 1 minus x. Alright. So what they ask us to show, show it. So after you show it, you write S H O W N to show that you shown it. Let's back up a bit. So here now, as for this part, we had x over one minus x minus four x over one. What we did was to draw the line and find the LCM. You could also have um, use common denominators. You want for something to be over 1 minus x. Alright? So, if you have 1 times 1 minus x, you must multiply the top by 1 minus x as well. So what happens here? You have one, you have x over one minus x minus, then you have it's going to be four x times one minus x divided by one minus x. Now all of this will be over one minus x. What do you have here? Is x minus four x one minus x. This part will be all over Anna. 1 minus x. So, what do you have here? You have the x, you have the 4x, and you have the 1 minus x. So you see, it's the same thing. It's just that we use common denominators down here, but we just use the LCM method directly up here. All right? So, all of that is shown. Now, what happens here? Oh, my. It's a hence shall solve the equation. X. Alright, let me just copy it. Let's, let's look at erasing some part of this work to get some space. No. Hence, solve the equation. This, we're going to solve this equation. Uh, what I just copied is all the way up here. Let's bring it down. Let's bring this all down here. No. Hence, solve this equation. Alright. Hence, solve it. No. What you're going to have is this. Okay, so um, hence, once you say hence solve the equation, it means whatever you were doing before, you use that method to solve it. Don't change and use another method. Now we have x 4x minus 3 divided by 1 minus x. <laughs> Divided by 1 minus x. And we're going to equate it to 0. 
Now, when you do that, consider what could possibly be the values on the left to make the, that all that side of the equation equal to zero. I want you to pause the video and work that out. All right, good. Now, let's consider some things here. If you have any number, uh, 0 divided by any number, for example, 0 over 1 minus x, that is equal to 0. All right? So, let's make the top here, the numerator equal to 0. x times 4x minus 3 equal to 0. Now, if x times 4x minus 3 equals to 0, then what can you say about the x times 4x minus 3? What can you say about the x itself? And what can you say about the 4x minus 3 itself? Remember, how we solve quadratic equations by factorization, you're going to use the same argument. Here, if x times 4x minus 3 equals 0, it means you have two expressions. And when you multiply them, you get 0. It means either one of them is 0 or the other is 0. Because any number times 0 is 0. It could also be both of them are 0 because 0 times 0 is also 0. Alright? Now, <clears throat> it is either x equals 0 or 4x minus 3 equals 0 or both. One of the solutions is x equals 0. You can see it already. That's this part, x equals 0. But what happens if 4x minus 3 equals 0? If 4x minus 3 equals 0, then if you add 3 to both sides, then 4x must be equal to 3. What would x be? If you divide both sides by 4, then what you're going to find is that x is equal to 3 quarter. So x is equal to 3 quarters is another solution to this equation. Alright? So x equals 0 and x is equal to 3 quarters. Alright, let's see what else is happening in this question. Let's just copy this and put it over here. Erase some part of the board first. What? We have x equals 0 and x equals 3 quarters for this part of the question. So, alright, we have it here already. Let me move it up a bit. So, x equals 0 and x equals 3 quarters. Now, let's paste what we had copied earlier. Let's paste it up here, so let's drag it down. It says, make V the subject of the formula P equals square root of 5 plus VT. Okay, so make V the subject of the formula. I want you to pause the video and do that. Right, you've done it. What did you get? Now remember, when you say make V the subject of the formula, you should have V equal and then no V's, no more V's. V alone equals. You should have nothing mixed up with the V. Then you have everything else over here. But there should not be any other V, alright? Now, 
you have p is equal to the square root of 5 plus vt. You square you square both sides of the equation or of the formula. So p squared is equal to the square root of s plus vt squared. When you square the square root of a number, what do you get? It's going to be the number itself. Just like how the square root of 3 squared is 3. Because it's the square root of 9. The square root of 4 squared is 4. Because what you're looking at is the square root of 16. And so on and so forth. You should remember that, right? It's like the square and the square root cancel out each other. Leaving the number undisturbed. So you have p squared equals s plus vt. Now, here, remember, you want v to be the subject. Now, you're going to have v equal. So you see, one thing is useful to do from now. The part with the v in it, put it on the left. s plus vt vt equals and then the other part put it on the right you could work with it as it is but since v is going to end up on the left you can just put it there from now get rid of the s and you must get rid of the t so you have v alone how do you get rid of the s you subtract it so you subtract S. So you have S plus VT equals P squared. So minus S minus S. S minus S is zero. So you have VT equal P squared minus S. You see that? Then get rid of the T. You, you divide by T. All right. So vt equals t squared minus s divided by t divided by t. T cancels t. So you have v equals p squared minus s all over t. So v is p squared minus s all over t. So v equals p squared minus s divided by t. So that's it for that. Alright? What else is going on here? Alright, we will leave this part for our next video.